to Healing Powers TV. I'm your host, Laura Powers, and I'm pleased today to have Lauren Miller here with us today. She is a guest expert on stress and has written four books, uh, the most recent of which is about to come out, and it's called 99 Things You Wish You Knew Before Stressing Out, which I guess we all could use that help. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it's well, amazing how many people live in a constantly stressed state, yeah. and just knowing the physiological effects of that. It definitely raises a, a curiosity to try to infiltrate it, that into your life every day for the sake of your own well-being. Sure. <laughs> so well, I wonder, since you are an expert about with stress, I wonder if you could start by talking about what stress is. Sure. Stress is actually uh, just a signal within your body. Okay. A physical signal within your body, giving you the opportunity to identify and adjust your perception of any situation. Okay. Um, th if, if that's the best definition that um, I continually use because it's action-based. You can identify it, you feel the tension in the neck, in the shoulders, in the back, in the hips, feet, wherever it manifests itself, and then you can adjust. Whatever needs to be adjusted, what am mm -hmm. I holding on to, what do I need to forgive, what do I need to accept, what do I need to mm -hmm. release, then you can become a curious and fascinated human being to return to that place of inner peace, so, which is essential for our, our, our for great cellular function, right. for inner health. And it, one of the things I've read, and maybe you can tell me more about this, but is that in our modern society, we get confused in terms of our body's reactions with what is really life-threatening. Like in, sure. in the wild, let's say, if we were yeah. out there, you know, something that makes us stress, it would be something where we were in danger. Yeah. And then we have a deadline at work or something, and it triggers the same response. During the headlights. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> when <laughs> it's really funny. not that serious, oh, yeah. but our body doesn't know the difference. Yeah, because at any, any time that we see as human beings, anything is a threat then there's a physiological response to that. If you find yourself in any situation that you feel is unsafe mm -hmm. or potentially threatening to your well-being, yeah. then boom, the body resp responds with fight, flight, or freeze. Okay. It's, it's an automatic response, and everybody has their own MO, yes. <laughs> so to speak. But what's interesting to, to kind of mention here is that um, actually the deer in the headlights that mm -hmm. people get when they're stressed, yeah. um, it's a real thing in terms of what's going on behind the scenes. There, there's an actual okay. freeze that happens, and um, the, the, the front part of the brain um, will start to become extremely heightened to the sensory intake. What you see, what you hear, feel, okay. taste, all the sensory just goes on to overload, so much so that it's like a tsunami in terms of the back part of the brain, the reasoning part, the right. ability to comprehend, organize, and respond to the okay. information you're taking in. So that's why we get the freeze when we feel threatened. So that your brain is working on overtime training. To yeah, the out sensory awareness thing. goes into overdrive, <laughs> and that's why it's fight, flight, or freeze, and our ability to come up with creative solutions is compromised because okay. it's so huge. It's like a tsunami. Right. And that's why some people are like, you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can actually yeah. see the freeze. There's not a lot of eye movement going on. Yeah. <laughs> so that's actually a technique you can do. You just start getting those eyes moving. Get that connection really? going. Interesting. When you forget information, look up. Start moving the eyes back and forth. You know, there's different points on the body to touch and, and stimulate when you're in the midst of a stressful situation to, to, to get out of the freeze okay. state. Return to breathing and then realize, hmm, I am safe. Okay. And perhaps I can handle anything that unfolds before me. I just forget. Yeah, and get so, locked up in your body's reactions. Like. Exactly, and, and familiar patterns of behavior. Yeah. Because as human beings, we, um, we react to the, the programs, the deeper structures that are subconscious, and 98% of what we do is subconscious. Mm -hmm. So we're reacting all day long, but, we, but there's so much power in that little extra percentage that's left over in terms right. of our ability to identify, oh, okay, that's a reactive behavior I've done my whole life. It no longer serves me. Right. And so perhaps I can adjust and shift and see myself as capable and worthy of love and acceptance and all of those things that cause us to freeze. Oh my gosh, will I be accepted? Will they approve of me? <laughs> all those right. things. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> anyway. so, so what are some really easy things that, um, that our audience can do to help with stress just in their everyday lives? Well, one of the things would be um, to just raise your awareness mm -hmm. to those triggers in your life. Um, be aware. Become the watcher, the observer of, okay, I'm going to watch me for a day, mm -hmm. and I'm going to see what triggers me. 
because usually you're uploading a, a past program from the past mm -hmm. that um, served you at the time, but now is, is a detriment to your yeah. sense of well-being, and you no longer need to move by that. So it just gives you that little gap of empowerment to shift your perspective of a situation. I mean, truly, when you, when you dismantle fear, which, which fuels stress in our body, feeling unsafe, it comes down to three things, that you feel that you're not safe, not yeah. capable of handling a situation, you're not okay, and ultimately, you know, when I went through the experience of cancer, the thought crossed my mind several times, I might die. Mm, yeah. So if you go to the root of that underneath and realize, I'm okay, mm -hmm. even in death. Yeah. <laughs> and if, and if, if that realization kicks in, then you know, you know I can handle anything and I'm always okay. I just forget that I'm always okay. I'm always yeah. capable of handling any and every situation. I just forget that I am. And so you give yourself that little gap of empowerment through your observation of your triggers. Right. So, I mean, physiologically speaking, when, when you're anxious or, or, or stressed, to, to t pat down the body, starting at the, the um, ankles and moving yourself up your body um, all the way up to the top of your head can help relieve the freeze okay. that happens. So when you, when you immediately, when you feel it and you, and you get into the, to the overload thought of the, the feeling, I'm not safe and I can't handle it, take a deep breath and just start moving the energy okay. all the way up. Tap around your ears, that's a really powerful spot. There's a lot of circuit breakers that get turned off around this area. And then where the arms come into the torso, right in this area here, and just getting the energy. Just tap it. Okay. It actually feels good, like if you tap yeah. here, you yeah. can actually feel kind of an instant release. And it, because it's sending messages through the body, all right, it's okay to relax right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's so tense because of the anxiety and the stress. Yeah. And you know, it's really an illusion. It really is. Because really, whether, mm -hmm. you know, um, we're always safe. We truly are always safe. We, we forget that we are. And, yeah. and um, you know, even in death, whether I stay or whether I go, it's, it's really no big deal. Yeah. Really. It, it's really no big deal. I, I had to work through that because I had a lot of freeze moments like, I don't want to die, I'm not ready, yeah. I'm not at the end of my life. You know, and of course that's the resistance to what is, but when you realize um, it's an acceptance of the life in front of your face, yeah. that, that burrs the most amazing sense of peace and well-being within the human heart, always. I think you brought so. up a really good point, which is it's always good when you're stressed out to play the you know, what's the worst thing that can happen game? Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. All, Ask yourself questions. Get so worked up. And sometimes these things, like the worst outcome, which is, first of all, probably not even likely anyway, is actually not that bad. Now, death yeah. is a more extreme example. But most yeah. of the things that I think stress people out in their daily lives are not that serious. It, oh, yeah. It's something to do with work or maybe a personal relationship or something. Yeah, oh, and, exactly. And uh, to think, oh, the worst outcome, and then step back from that and think, can I handle that? Probably, mm -hmm. yes. And that's a very is, good. That's a very good technique. Yeah. I remember reading that in my early twenties in one of the anxiety courses that I was taking. They spoke about that when you're in a stressful situation mm -hmm. to ask yourself questions. Again, be a curious and fascinated human being. What's this about for me? Right. And what if this happens? And what if that happens? And keep peeling the onion till mm -hmm. you get down and say, "Well, I'm willing to accept myself even if that happens." Right. And to believe that I'm capable of handling that, even that, no matter what. I'm willing to believe that I'm capable of handling anything. Yeah. And then you start breathing easily again. Mm -hmm. And you realize, wow, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, could, we can make the shift just by our really... consciousness of what's going on around us. Yeah, because sometimes when you go through that thing, you realize um, that it's not so much as what you built it up to in your Oh, in your I, <laughs> never is. That's yeah. assumptions, you know, mm -hmm. assumptions in our life. and. And the use of universal quantifiers, always, never, nobody, everyone, yeah. nothing ever works out for me. Oh, yeah. You know, things like that that keep us stuck also keep us stressed. Mm -hmm. So to even change our language, to start reframing the negative into the positive, will have a profound shift in the stress level in the body. I mean, mm -hmm. all the way down, you know, in epigenetics, Dr. Bruce Lipton has done some amazing work in this area, proving what Einstein said, that the field directly affects the particle. So by your thoughts, you affect your cellular function, yeah, wow. yeah. and um, which is the truth. So guard your thoughts because your body's listening very mm -hmm. closely to whatever you think up here. Wow. Yeah, yeah. it's very powerful. Makes you vigilant. <laughs> <laughs> I remember doing that. Delete, delete. Use the delete button. A lot of this really comes down to um, 
stepping back and sort of thinking through it instead of just getting caught up in your body's being physiological reactive. Yeah. response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely, that's what it is. Rather than being a reactive human being um, to what's happening before you, and any time you're reactive, know that you're not in the present moment. Yeah. When we're reactive as human beings, it's because we're downloading information from our past or we're projecting the past into the future. Nothing ever worked out for me, so it's not going to work out for me right. in the future. No, no relationship ever works out for me, so I'm not going to meet someone and have a healthy relationship. So we do the take from the past, throw it into the future stuff all the time. When our greatest peace and, and inspiration and sense of well-being comes in now, the life in front of our face, it's really getting ourselves away from the, the past and the future stuff. I heard a great analogy the other day um, where someone was saying, uh, basing everything on past experience, your expectations on past experience, is like driving by only looking in the rearview mirror. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. No I've one would that do before. that, but we do that in our lives in terms of our thoughts and expectations. All yeah, the time. we do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we constantly look look back, look back. I mean, what would our life be like if we could wake up tomorrow and truly not have any concern for for anything that's happened in our past? So I'm curious, since you have done so much research about stress. Are there some things that you've found particularly surprising that you've learned? You know, I continually get the studies mm -hmm. um, sent to me all yeah. the time of the recent studies that are linking the physiological effects of stress on the body. Okay. Um, you know, and when I get them, I actually say, of course it does. You know, it, it inhibit our ability to, to um, process the sugar at the cellular level or in a way that benefits the body. Right. Of course it shuts that down. Of course the adrenals shut down. Mm -hmm. and the, and the the immune system drops and the, and the blood pressure, you know, increases and um, we actually, you know, the T cells that are infection fighting cells in our body um, become compromised. But, you know, you start laughing and you boost those T cells oh. and the immune system goes up. <laughs> you really so try to laugh every day, even if it's fake, you have the benefits. So, yeah. They, they, even they, fake they, laughter yep. is better than no laughter. Yeah. All right. So the scientific, yeah, this, it's amazing, the evidence, they're actually looking at laughter as a possible cure for asthma and, and uh, depression and wow. cancer. That's how powerful it is. It just boosts the immune system in phenomenal ways down wow. to the cellular level. Thank you so much for being on the show. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience before we finish uh, up for today? Just, just that realize that, that stress is a choice. Mm -hmm. Truly, to stress or not to stress is the question. And your choice <laughs> of response is makes all the difference in the outcome. Yeah. And I speak about that quite a bit in my book, 99 Things You Wish You Knew Before Stressing Out, because it's a preventative thing. You, you want to you do the 99 things before you stress out to maintain a sense of health and well-being. Yeah in the body. You don't want to wait till you get the phone call that says you're sitting down. Trust me. Yeah. That doesn't feel good. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so lighten up, laugh, remain in a place of um, curiosity and fascination and gratitude for all of life that unfolds before mm -hmm. you. Um, release your need to own, control, possess, to analyze things, conclude, and interpret life. Life is truly meant to be experienced. Mm -hmm. And in the experience, we remain in the flow. Wow. So. Thank you. I think that's very powerful and Thank a you. great way to end a conversation about stress by focusing on the positive. Yep. And, like laughter. That's it. Joy. <laughs> that's it. Keeps well, you healthy. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Um, thanks for being on the show. And how can people get a hold of you or find out more information about you and what you do? Sure. Um, basically, everything is, I, I go through my main website, which is okay. laurenemiller.com, L-A-U-R-E-N-E miller.com. And um, it has all the, the latest information. Um, I have an official launch for my fourth book on June 7th. I know there's a lot of people that are partnering with me with lots of free gifts on that day if you order the book on June 7th. Okay. Um, and then all the updates and links and everything are found at laurenemailer.com. So. Great. Well, thank you so much for yeah. being on the show. This was really Absolutely. Fascinating. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. I appreciate it. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.